Uh, all right, you know what time it is. You know I gotta show the offerings. There's two blueprints to, to spawn the hatch by the killer shack, and then we're going on a terrible map. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us in this fun video for you guys today. We are gonna try to get rid of a, an attempted bully squad here, sending us to a trash map. And you can see even behavior was trying to work against us in this video. Um, because you're gonna notice like a couple of things off about this um, about this map. And I'm gonna let you guys, you know, take a wild guess. You know, once you see it, you know what I'm saying, leave a comment about it. But I'll make sure to point it out right after we see it. Um, but that being said, we're gonna go right into the to the chase here. They are they do have a flashlight, so we already can keep that in mind in the back of our heads. Um, they are going for the harvester. Um, so if you know anything about the harvester, um, you already know what's about to go down. So we're gonna. We, I did actually the corner of my eye. I'm not vaulting incorrectly. I noticed that their teammate was also up there going for the vault. So I want to go for her instead. Um, she's all crouching there like a roach. I don't know what the hell she's doing. So we're gonna go ahead and focus on the, <laughs> on the um, what's her name? Yui, I think it was. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and break the pallet. She's gonna probably give me one more. We want one more pallet. Yep. Thank you. And then we can go ahead and break that. And now guess what we're going to do? We're going to keep following her. Because she seems like she's really loose with the pallets. She like, loves throwing out those pallets. So I'm just going to be really glad. I'm grateful that I can chase this clown. So now we're going to go ahead and use our Spirit of Fury. And then we can go ahead and follow her. Now, mind you, we are in our corrupted um, you know, intervention area. So it isn't the greatest thing to do. Um, but judging by the fact that you know, I was able to get two to two, like about three pallets, including the shack, mind you. The shack pallets is long gone at five gens. Um, and we got two other pallets. We got her down and a hook and an injure. I think we did pretty well. Um, now, we do see the fang here, so we can try to follow through with them instead. Um, and we can try to get another pallet out of the situation as well. So we can just kind of activate our shroud here so they don't know where we're coming from. As you can see, they looped really wide because, you know, they're, they're probably hesitating. We were able to get the pickup here. But the gen, like, two gens did pop. They were lucky enough to actually get the save. So you already know, um, you know, what you have to do in this situation is usually go after um, the person that did get unhooked. Um, well, got saved, I should say. Now... In this situation, I figured, nah, I don't really need to do that because they're going to go for the save on the Yui. Now, what I want to do is actually force them to go for a trade here. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going for because I noticed, as you can see, if you haven't seen it already, there's a hill here that is connected to the uh, shack window right there. So what that pretty much will tell you is now we're dealing with a staggered teching area. If you didn't notice it before, if you got a keen eye, you know what I'm saying, for BS, you, you've seen it, you see it already. Um, there is that. We did get the UE to second to second hook, so that's fantastic. Now, as you can see, this person's completely healthy. She, and another person's running around here. Now, in this situation, why would I leave this area? You know what I'm saying? Everybody's here. Like, nobody's on gens. So I'm like, this is working out perfectly for me. Now, what I'm going to do is, like, block this doorway in front of me. And then we're gonna have the other person in front of me, like, you know, that can actually go for the trade, which is what I want. They do go for the hit, right? And then because of that, the Dwight's here trying to think he's gonna sneak behind me. That's exactly what I want. We're gonna hit both of them, so they both have to run off. They can't get the save now. Um, they should have just gone for the trade. None of them have hooks. They should have gone for the trade. I don't know why they're um, trying to leave them on the hook all, all day long, but she pretty much dies. You know what I'm saying? So now she's dead. Now, in a situation like this, I'm being, like, you got to keep in mind, right? Like, they're trying to stay around the shack um, to get the hatch. They're trying to send me to this horrible map. I'm getting bad map RNG, as you can see, because, like, here's a demonstration. He staggers and instantly gets the vault. Um, but she's stupid, so I was able to knock him down. So, which is, which is like, you know, one of the plays that I do when I'm playing Ghostface to turn off the red light. I, this isn't an educational commentary, so I won't be, like, demonstrating the whole thing. If you want to see it again, you can rewind. Um, but the play is what you saw. And it's very quick. I, I'm very quick with it. A lot of people just think that they just got down because they were unaware. But you have to keep in mind, like, how, like how much I play this character. I'd only play this character. So I know what I'm doing. Now, you can see here this guy double vaults like a clown. 
and just runs away. I don't know why he does that. He loves just double vaulting and running away all day long. Now this one over here somehow got balanced. I wasn't sure how, but then like when I'm looking at it like right now, I kind of saw like a little bit of the height to it because depending on where you run from will determine if you can get balanced off of the hill. Um, but we do hit the A's. So we can try to go for him again because he's just kind of running in the middle of nowhere. Um, but as you can see, survivors are gonna abuse the, the most broken shit in the maps. As you can see, he got he got a he got a fast vault from dropping over a, a, a great height. So I don't know how anyone can say that's balanced, but sure, we're just working with it. He's pretty lost again, so we just knock him down again. We're gonna face the wall because you know that, that one of them has a flashlight, and he starts shining it at the wall. I don't know. I don't know. What, are they like illuminating? the corner of the room I don't know but whatever we got the hook there <laughs> he's on second hook um so if you guys didn't notice that that right there on next to the shack is the one of the most uh, one of the uh, broken spawns that I got on this map and then there is there is at least one more that you haven't seen yet we're gonna wait by the by the doorway here we want to see if he goes in for the save he doesn't he, he's scared um yeah he just kind of ran off again He's probably going back to the hill, because think about it, right? Survivors have to abuse broken. They have to abuse broken. They, yep, double vault. Can't, you have to, they have to. They have to. But this is why I say, like, survivors are not worried about your fun. And this is why I play the way I want to play, because survivors don't care about how you, like, about you as the killer player. They don't. If they did, they wouldn't be sitting around abusing everything they see. Especially when it's this, like, you know, BS. Like, come on now. Now, we can try to go for the, um, the hook on them now. That's fine. We got another person um, on a hook. We got the, the aces on death hook. And then we got the, um, the thing that we were, gonna, we were going to go for. But for some reason, the, uh, this clown wants to use deliverance. So we're going to go ahead. He does have a target on his back. So that's the perfect place to put my knife. Um, and then we can go ahead and follow through with the Fang because she wants to run behind me for some magical reason. So we're, we're going to activate <laughs> Jolt again. Um, and then we can just take him to the basement as well. So I think it's probably their first hook, more than likely. Um, but we're trying to split the pressure as best we can. So, yeah. I mean, we've been staying around this area, which is pretty good. We made this area very, like, unsafe. We've been staying around this area the whole time. Because um, they want to put two offerings to spawn the hatch in an area. Um, like, I would, I, like, arguably you could say this is te technically a bully squad. Um, but we're going to call it a bully squad because, I mean, come on now. Like, they're definitely in a squad. And they're trying to, you know, just take advantage of a, of a bad map. Um, now, we could try to go after Ace here. I think he might have had balance because the way I vaulted, it just put the camera above where he ran off to, so I, was, I just kind of ignored it. Let him run off somewhere else, he's completely useless to me. We want to focus on somebody who's injured, i.e. The, the Dwight here, which he's running into an area with no pallet. Um, and we can just try to go ahead and follow through with him now. Now, what I should have probably done was followed him all the way over to, so he could prevent the double vault, because he just does it again, because every time he makes a mistake, he just double vaults. Um, which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. We're going to shift our focus again because we know that somebody went for the save. So we do want to go for the thing again um, to get them onto another hook. Because as I usually say to do, like when you get somebody out the game, you want to just trade the hooks. Um, that's up to you. I personally do that because it's a lot easier. You know, I don't have to like sweat every single person. I can just sweat the one person and then just have a casual time killing everybody else. I find that more enjoyable um, than having to... You know, go for the same person uh, again and again. But, you know, they did run into me, so I just took advantage of the situation. We're going to go inside the, air, the TNL here to make sure it's harder to get the play. Um, he's pretty dumb, so he's going to go for this. Now, if you take a look there, take, take a wild look. If you didn't see it, there's two um, strong pallets side by side. Now, if you're actually, you know, a smart um, survivor player, you wouldn't have dropped either one of those, right? And say I didn't have Spirit Fury Enduring, right? He could have been able to go just kind of back and forth between those two pallets, and I would have to not, not necessarily respect it every single time, but I would still have to keep in mind that there was two pallets right here that
that I just broke is Spirit of Fury and the one right next to it, next to that main building. A smart survivor player would have been able to take advantage of that. So that's, you know, if you guys guessed it, you know what I'm saying, good job. Because that's already like three areas just kind of connected to one another that are pretty garbage. Um, that's probably made for this, possibly, maybe. I did fake that I was going back. They do try to pretend they're faking something and it makes them get a bad vault. That's exactly why I did what I did. Now, I did go for the pickle because I thought they would run away, but this clown was able to actually use the speed boost from getting unhooked to get the blind, which is pretty interesting. They actually had like a free uh, background player, um, you know, off of that. So I was like, all right, that gave you that. You know, you got lucky, that's fine. But that doesn't mean the thing isn't going to die. <laughs> Because now we just go for her again. Just literally maybe one pallet. The ace wants to get in the way. I could care less. Like, I want everyone injured. I don't know why they think that body block is going to save their lives. But it's really not. Now we get the pallet out of it. That's great. We're just making this entire map a complete dead zone. There will literally be zero pallets. Um, very soon. Now because they are running up here, you already know what's about to happen. Of course, they add balance for whatever reason. So I'm like, okay, fine. Um, they do kind of think they're faking side to side or some nonsense. I don't know if it was to get the fast vault or not. Um, they are able to rotate back around all the way up again, so I just kind of left the area. Because, mind you, that's already three areas here that are just completely just garbage um, for an M1 killer. So I'm like, whatever, we just got to shift their focus again um, to somebody else. Now, everybody's injured, right? So like, if they want to be around a gen, we can just get Jolt to activate again. Let's, let's make it happen, right? I don't have to waste time kicking any gens. Um, and if you're watching my gameplays, you know I don't tend to kick gens too often. Um, they are healing next to the shack. I don't know why they would go to the shack. It's probably not the smartest play. Um, but, we, but what I am trying to do is just try to waste as much time. We do know this kid likes a double vault, so of course I was going to attempt to at least go for the window swing. Why wouldn't I? He loves going for that window vault. Um, so we are going to mind game him there, caught him off guard, and then we do get Jolt to activate. We're going to wait a second because you know that thing has a flashlight as well. Um, and they do go for the vault. I was going to try to fake it there. We activate the shroud and then we're going to go right back inside. Of course, she's waiting there. Why wouldn't she? We can just vault into them. Um, but then here's the kicker because now they can just rotate right around the hill and just take a wild guess what they're going to do. Uh-huh, they just abuse the vault again. So while they're busy doing that, I'm going to be able to get the pick up here. Um, on the Dwight here and just get them out of the game as soon as possible. So, like I've said before, survivors don't care about your fun. Why do you think bully squads exist? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they don't care about the killer. You know what I'm saying? So as a killer, you shouldn't care about them either. So I attempt to at least go for the swing there. I figured I was able to do that once with Freddy. Um, but it's just, I, uh, I just didn't even try it. And then he still managed to get the fast vault and ran right into the shack perfectly fine. Yet if I were to do the same thing on Survivor, I would just magically get it. So it is what it is. It is what it is. They are running into a dead zone, so we can't just knock them down. Um, pretty simple stuff. They do get Jolt on it, so it's probably on the other gen behind me. Um, and then we can just go find Ace. He's probably working on a gen. He's going to think that they're going to somehow get an escape from this. They're going to try to... Because um, the thing is, if I try to hook the 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 fang um she's going to try to like get the hatch out of it and i'm not gonna let that happen because i already like behavior was already trying to hold their hand giving them these garbage ass maps um that spawn this way then on top of that i'm getting the just just horrible like <laughs> oh boy just this map in general i never like i never like being on this map but also just the fact that they're just going to abuse just like just that like that wild ass spawn where a hill can just spawn next to the shack window. Like what are you talking about? Now this clown thinks they can spin me. That's probably like the third time they tried it for some reason. And they keep getting downed every single time. I don't know why they keep trying it. It's not going to work. I really don't understand it. It's kind of a so oh boy. So we, we only need one more pallet for Spirit Fury, so whatever they decide to do will work out in my favor. Now, they probably have comms, because if you keep in mind that ended up using Spirit Fury on the Dwight before he died, um, they're probably going to, you know, because think about it, right? Like, you got three people running offerings that were silent. Like, that were not only the same um, offering, but also the map offering as well. 
the altruism and stuff like that, you know, just all that just tells me that it's probably a Swift. Um, just, just, just judging by the coordination and stuff like that, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, but could be wrong, but it does seem that way. Just because, like, there's no way that that you know, it's really, it's, it's really odd that they would get the same map offering. Like two survivors running the same exact map offering is kind of crazy. But they're also kind of running together. I don't know if they're trying to attempt to heal again. It's not gonna work that way. Hey, dude, give me the pallet out of it. We already know that. So we're gonna get rid of the pallet. Um, and a match like this kind of just shows why I run the same build every time. It works for my play style, so I can invalidate all of their defense. Um, and I can play as aggressively as I want. Um, of course, they're going to pre-drop, but they're just making it a bigger dead zone. I really could care less. Um, it only benefits me. So there they go running around again. They pre-drop again. I'm just going to break it. <laughs> just going to break it. They run into me. Don't care. Knocked him down. I'm not hooking him. Because um, I'm not letting them get the hatch. You know what I'm saying? I, it w I had to make a statement out of this. I had to make an example out of these people, man. You're not going to get away to scot free like this, man. It's, come on. Like, <laughs> come on. You're going to play scummy, abusing, like, the BS on the map, right? And, of course, I'm sent to this, too. It's, it's really crazy. I got sent to it, and then I got the worst version of it as well. I'm like, holy moly. So I just kind of ran around trying to find them, you know. I really want to make sure they get they both get downed, so that I can just get them both out the game at the same time. So I don't I don't, I don't want anybody getting that chance for the hatch, especially after putting two map offerings. I mean, two hatch offerings and a map offering. No, <laughs> no. So now we knock them down. You gotta make sure I look at them, tell them no, 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 you're bad. No, no, no. And then just just take a wild guess with the aces. Let's just take a wild guess. Oh, would you look at that? Running to go comp corner. Why wouldn't they? Like, Jesus Christ. Now, I will call this a bully squad in the video, as you're going to probably see. Um, I consider this a bully squad. Um, just mostly by, like, I judge a bully squad by intention. You know what I'm saying? Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the result that, that I would consider a bully squad. I would consider intention just due to by, due by map offering, you know, um, build choice. Um, you know, just offerings, map choice, build choice, that kind of thing. Usually will deter, at least allow me to determine that it is a bully squad. So with that being said, I like, thank you for watching. If you enjoy, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Do all the YouTube things, uh, please. You know what I'm saying? So we can get this channel out there for the rest. And oh, look at that. I was able to close the hatch. <laughs> so I'd like to thank you for watching once again. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube things. So if, you want, if you want to see more Ghostface content, stay tuned. We're going to have a guide coming out. Here's the build for you guys, all the builds. And uh, have a good one.